I mean, the, the thing that I like about the jet, that I'm fascinated by it, is that it's 180 million years old. It has a, a depth of antiquity to it that fascinates me. It has no other purpose or use. It's, there's no medical use. It can't be used as a, a tool. It's for personal adornment only, and there's nothing that I know as a jeweler that has the same warmth, the same velvety blackness that Jet does, as black as Jet. It's rare because it's only found in a narrow area of the world at this quality. My personal interest in jewellery is restoration work. I love that. And there was an awful lot of jet produced in the 19th century. And the 19th century patterns were very complex. There was cross-cut facets, there was high levels of, of cameo carving, really displaying lots of lapidary skills. Now, as a restoration artist, I'm often given one earring because the customer has lost one and I've got to walk in the footsteps of the original master carver so that she can't tell the difference between the one that she owns and the ones that I've done. So in order to do that, I've had to acquire the signature styles of a lot of the master carvers, which was challenging and extremely interesting. I got commissioned to do some restoration work on a necklace that was found in a burial kist in Argyleshire called the Paul Tullock Necklace. Now this was a Bronze Age necklace and it was i.e. four and a half thousand years old and was made completely out of jet, found hundreds of miles away in Scotland when the jet is only domiciled in about seven and a half miles here in Whitby. So the whole idea of that fascinated me and then I had to do a copy of this necklace, which required the acquisition of more of the jet. And I, that's how it kicked me off. I got fascinated by the idea that, that this as a, a gemstone had been used for personal adornment, nothing else, since early Bronze Age, early tool making none had been fascinated by jet. And that's what got me interested in it. You're, you're stretched if you try to emulate master carvers. It's always like walking in the footsteps of, of um, a, a master carver. And that in itself promotes your own personal skill. I mean, at, at, at art college, you were always encouraged to look at some of the master carvers and try to, to paint like them or to carve like them because that itself is instructive. I'm lucky enough to have my daughter showing an enormous interest in the business and has joined it and brings initially a whole new youthful concept to the design aspect being only 21 completely different approach to it. Uh, the useful combination of amber and jet together being the, the only two organic fossils, that's rather interesting. And also more modern shapes, flowing shapes, organic shapes, um, rather than the strict disciplined 19th century ones. And the, the constant approach of how can we use this in a different way? Um, very exciting, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, you, you can apply the, the thousand hours thing to it. If you do something long enough and hard enough, and you've got enough interest and passion in it, it you will become competent in it. But yeah, it's not easy. If you've got a piece of plasticine, you could probably make a good job of molding a flower. But if you're then given a, a stone, it's a whole different ball game. You've got to then carve things, taking things away, and it's not going to move. Uh, difficulty is the thing, and that's down to practice.